Ryland here, and I'm here with the early broadsword from Medieval Shop. Now, I know most of y'all are looking at this thing, it looks very much like a Viking Age sword. Uh, it has a broad blade due to the Type 10 blade, which most people will recognize this as a Type 10 if you're into Uric Oakshot uh, typology. Uh, and yes, that is very true, and Type 10s were used all the way, uh, I mean, on. One of the reasons I feel this is called an early broadsword by Medieval Shop. Uh, which is kind of an odd term, is because a Type 10 blade uh, was an earlier style blade. And although a very useful design, with its high beam construction with a deep fuller, uh, it would be broader than some of the more uh, tapered swords that started coming about. Because uh, you ended up getting with the uh, smaller fuller, uh, longer, more profile blade tapers and uh, distal tapers to the swords. Not only to make them more rigid for thrusting, but it also made them a little bit more wieldy, even though some of them were quite heavy during the 13th century. But I think, like, in my mind, it's a 12th, 13th century sword, possibly. Uh, I could go back to the Viking Age. Roland Borzeka has found that some of the swords in museums actually had longer hilts than we thought. Uh, now, they probably weren't much longer, because these were extremely short and within range of what we see as Viking Age swords and Army swords over the period where they were very tight grip. But uh, some of them, who knows, might have had slightly longer hilts before they'd been repaired multiple times, or uh, repaired before they were put in display. So it's not impossible. And most companies do have a sword like this. They have a sword that is a uh, two-handed Viking sword, you know, whether the Vikings used them or not, or the uh, Scandinavians did. And most people did use shields at that period. There wasn't as much armor earlier in the period, so a uh, two-handed sword was something more of if you needed to put an extra grip on the sword, you would in some way. Uh, but whether they would allow accommodation for that's not very common when defining a sword and shield. It's got a nice blade heft, uh, a longer hilt, uh, and a tea cozy style pommel that almost uh, has remnants of a uh, five lobe pommel, but in a unique uh, manner, the Brazil nut shape. So what this allows for, it allows for you to use it two-handed or one-handed. And being a true war sword or battle sword, like some people might call it, where yes, it's not a long sword totally, but it could be used one or two-handed. And this tea cozy pummel allows for Roland Borzeka's cast blow, being able to cast out and allow it to keep it from slipping from your grasp. Uh, and then you could also still get a nice uh, hand and a half grip on it if you want to do some kind of cut. We tried that out. Matter of fact, I tried an extra head out first, and I started off like in Tog, and came straight down and cut the side of the head off. Oh! Oh! We got a perfectly clean cut. Didn't do any edge damage to the sword that I can tell of. Beautiful edge and it took this piece completely out right here. A little cracking on the skull, but that's common even with the cut. Look at that slice, it's beautiful. Oh, the hair off each way. Just slice flesh. Oh. Now that's more than what I was expecting if we got into the skull. We've sliced completely into the skull on the other side. Now his skull is very, very narrow. Sorry about my poor aim today. I don't know why it was aiming off so much. New, ta uh, new stand, new target, new area to get used to. And you can see the blood coming out right here from inside the skull. Very, very nasty. You see as it runs down the jaw. Hmm. What can we do now? Just chop his head off already. That's what I'm thinking. Let's just take the head and put it off. Oh! I think you broke the neck. Uh, it shattered the neck. That must have been why it started spinning. And I cut a hair high. I would still say that was an excellent kill. This head can put it off. As the bone shattered in the neck as it went through, through. we had a little bit of tearing, but a fairly good slice. That's a nice slice. Yeah. Okay. Every blow, I think, was a kill. Uh, so it was very impressive. 
Uh, I did a few more cuts with it, but uh, with the new stand, uh, and we had some flaws in the neck where the head wanted to, to rotate, which it's not supposed to, I didn't feel like it did the sword justice, even though they were ex extremely impressive cuts. I'm going to try another head today. Uh, and all the cutting with the bottles, uh, this did exceptionally well for this type of sword. Uh, and you can use it one-handed or two-handed, like I said, with a shield. It worked really well on uh, our poor man's Tom here, rolled wet newspaper. with a shield and without a shield. But, like I said, I made a separate head uh, just because I didn't think that the other cuts did this uh, sword justice. But in this case, we have it where we can throw a cast blow with it. And I'm gonna start off by throwing a cast blow right into the head. I'm gonna be standing with a hip hinge and everything. And most people will recognize it over more Rosetta style. Hip hinge and everything, and I will go ahead and uh, Stand here, step in, and uh, cut through the head, and we'll see what it does. I would say we got a pretty substantial blow here directly into the head. Nice and deep. We've got blood running out everywhere. We've got a nice cut directly into the head. No damage to the edge in any way. And it's oozing out. Oh, definitely. That was nice just from a one-handed hit. Let's see what we can do using it two-handed exceptionally well with our Skialder or Skialder, uh, the shield I just used, and we used the cast blow, where you could either hinge your hips and go out or stand back and just cast the blade out and let the uh, hilt hold the blade in the hand and let the blade do the work. Right now we're going to do it in a position of like Tog, and I'm going to use it like if I was in a battle later century, 11th, 12th century, very possible a sword could be used in, because even though it's a type 10 blade and everything, they still use these type of swords and putting an extra a little bit of length to the handle uh, and balancing a heavier blade made sense. That way you could possibly injure a man in fully covered clad mail or get a better cut through tougher materials. So we'll start off. I'm going to start off in like Tog style thing here. Or I'll start here. Something very basic they could have used to just step in and cut and see what happens. Pretty much like I did with the uh, medieval uh, Scottish sword. Uh, Scottish longsword. Uh, uh, slash uh, mini claymore, whatever you want to call it. Be sure to check that out. Back up here, but I don't know what we can do about this. Uh, it looks like a leak went out of brackets. With our new stand that holds it so rigid, we actually shattered our spine due to the impact of it trying to cut through the skull. And as you see, there's an extra uh, spine inside that comes up to hold the head together properly. And that's basically what's going on. So what we've done is we effectively cut through our skull. And with the force that I put behind it, not only did the cut stop, I guess when it hit here, but there was enough torque to snap the neck. <laughs> I told you it wouldn't let go. <laughs> uh, I'm glad I did two heads on this one. We've had one problem after the other with the heads. I guess this is a great, uh, an awesome sword with the cursed heads in it. But I still think that was impressive. All right, what we've done here is I put a really tough piece of uh, PVC pipe uh, as a pin inside of our other PVC pipe. So this might make it more difficult, but we're still going to try our decap. If I can cut right at it, it should be good. What we did is we took out part of our, our skull here. and managed to cut our cross 
And we have our piece there. Put it back on, heal them as we always do. And we're still going to try to see what kind of decap we get out of this with a one-handed cast blow. Okay, I'm going to use a cast blow without a shield. Like if I was blade fencing, and I stepped in and just went full force at his throat. And even with the repair, we've got a beautiful, clean decap. And not only did we go through one of the piece of PVC pipe like we normally use, we actually cut into the other one. Very beautiful decap. The sword operated just like it should. Very clean and pretty. Sorry about the repair. Uh, I think that the force, we don't have that very often transferred from the sword because it's quite a hefty blade actually probably would have been enough to shatter a spine or break a neck and you'd have a damaged vertebrae. If you got hit solid enough uh, and there was no way for anything to absorb the force and your head took the full brunt of it in the neck, uh, that the first blow, even though it would have chopped through his cranium, maybe if he had a skull cap on or a small helmet, he probably would have still injured his neck. That's what, that's what that tells me, the kind of force we saw there. But then with the last cut, if you hit a man that was unarmored neck, I believe that we have the Highlander effect here where the head just falls clean off. Beautiful cut. Sword performed excellently. I'm glad I did another head with it. Sorry about the incident where the neck actually broke. That's very rare. It doesn't happen. But I think we, our force got ate up because we already had one cut in it. And then going through, our spine had, uh, was deeper than I thought. So we ended up hitting our spine, head, and all. So that transferred completely over to the head itself. Hope you all enjoyed our episode with the early broadsword, and I think it's an excellent name for it because the broadsword uh, name, later century, refers to swords that were used for cutting when people were going to thrusting. And uh, they broader blades like basket hilts and stuff like that, uh, sabers and stuff a lot of times were called broadswords or broadsword style of combat. It was just a name, like a nickname. So him calling a broadsword in a time when swords became a little more tapered, not as thin and, and wide a fuller, uh, makes sense if it was at a place at a time. I mean, but heck, who knows? Even a Viking might have something like this early period or uh, some of the early uh, Scandinavian warriors. Anyway, as always, uh, Farvel.